A little while ago, I posted a video explaining how to use Virtual Desktop to stream games wirelessly to your Quest. Since then, there have been numerous software updates, and now we have a brand new headset, the Oculus Quest 2, that we can use to play wireless PC VR games. This video is an update to that previous video. I will show you exactly how to turn your Oculus Quest 1 or 2 into a wireless PC VR headset using Virtual Desktop, even if you have no technical knowledge whatsoever. If you don't already know what Virtual Desktop is, it's an app that allows you to connect your PC to your Quest so that you can play PC VR games on your Quest wirelessly. I had my doubts about using Virtual Desktop at first, but it really does allow you to play PC VR games wirelessly without losing any noticeable quality when compared to the Oculus Link. That being said, Virtual Desktop isn't a flawless experience for everyone. By using Virtual Desktop, you're going to have a small amount of latency. Latency, also known as lag, is measured in milliseconds and is the time it takes for your PC to communicate with the headset. That means if you have 50 milliseconds of latency, it will take 50 milliseconds from the time that you move your hand in real life for you to see your hand move in VR. Latency of under 50 milliseconds is only noticeable if you're moving your hands extremely fast. For regular gameplay, 50 milliseconds makes no difference and I was able to play Half-Life Alex wirelessly beginning to end with Virtual Desktop and I had zero complaints. I was getting about 40 milliseconds of latency, but I didn't notice any of the lag and the visuals were just as good as they would be with Link. In this guide, I'm going to go over everything you need to use Virtual virtual desktop to play PC VR games wirelessly without losing visual fidelity or increasing your latency above 30 to 50 milliseconds. I'll also explain to you my setup, which involves using a dedicated router to get the best results. And at the end of the video, I'll talk about all of the settings you can adjust and how to optimize them to get the best results for whatever setup you're using. The biggest question I see is regarding hardware, and specifically how to get a good connection from the PC to the Quest. To do this successfully, you will need a couple of things. One, a gaming computer. I really hope this goes without saying. Two, a good router that can produce a 5 GHz Wi-Fi channel. I recommend a Wi-Fi 6 router as this will ensure that your router meets the minimum speeds required for this to work and if you have the Quest 2 which supports Wi-Fi 6, you'll have an even faster connection to the PC. That being said, other routers will work just as well as long as they are decent routers. Whatever you do, your internet service provider's stock router will most likely not be fast enough for this to work effectively. If you don't have a router, keep watching and I'll explain to you how to get decent results with a PC hotspot using a Wi-Fi card. 3. You need an Ethernet connection from the PC to the router. I recommend getting a CAT6 Ethernet cable just to make sure you aren't using a slow, low-quality cable that could be the bottleneck that ruins your connection. And lastly, a big enough play space where you will be within view of the router. It is extremely important that you are within eyesight of the router, as 5 GHz Wi-Fi does not travel through walls and other objects very well. Not being in the same room as the router will increase increase latency and reduce the visual quality of the game significantly, so make sure that you have enough play space next to your router to play. Once you have everything set up, there are a couple of different ways you can set everything up depending on your situation. First I'll describe the most common setup, then I'll explain my setup, and then finally a budget setup that you can use if you don't have the money for a good router. First, you can use the same router that's connected to your home's Wi-Fi. This works as long as you have a decent router, and your router is connected to the PC via Ethernet, and you have the router set up in the same room as your VR play space. For most of us, this doesn't work. For me, my router is in my kitchen on the other side of my home for where I have my PC and can play VR. Beyond that, my internet speeds are only 40 megabits per second, which is extremely slow and can ruin my experience when I want to play VR while other people at my house want to also use the internet. This is why I recommend having a dedicated router for VR gaming. I bought a Wi-Fi 6 router, which I'll link below, that is dedicated to the sole task of connecting my PC to my Quest. It is not connected to my home's internet and thus the game quality isn't ruined when other people are using my internet. For the setup to work for you, your PC needs to connect to two networks at the same time, your home internet via Wi-Fi and your Quest dedicated router via Ethernet. This will allow you to play online games even though your Quest's router isn't connected to your home's internet. 
To set up your dedicated router, simply plug one end of your ethernet cable into your PC and the other end into a LAN port on your router. Then use the guide that came with your router to set up a network name and password. At this point, your PC should be connected to both your home's Wi-Fi network and your dedicated router. Please note that if you try to open a web page on your computer, you might not be able to access the internet when you first set this up. I find that leaving the computer alone for a bit usually fixes the problem. You should still be able to use the internet on your computer like normal with the router connected. It just might take a few minutes for your computer to figure that out. After you verify that your computer is connected correctly, you just need to connect your Quest to this network. When you connect your Quest, you'll get a message saying that your Quest has no internet, which is perfectly fine. You will still be able to play online VR games on your PC as long as your PC is connected to the internet as described before. Another setup that I tried, which is a budget setup, involves creating a hotspot on your computer. To do this, you need a Wi-Fi card on your PC. If you're not sure if you have one, just ask yourself, are you connected to the internet via Wi-Fi? If the answer is yes, then you have some sort of Wi-Fi card. Next, you need to ask yourself if your Wi-Fi card can produce 5 GHz channel and how fast it can transmit data. I have a dual band Wi-Fi card that says it produces up to 867 megabits per second over the 5 GHz channel. I tried using virtual desktop with this Wi-Fi card's hotspot and it worked surprisingly well. But while this setup works, it won't be as good as a decent router, which is why I prefer using a dedicated router over a Wi-Fi card. But if you're on a budget, and already have a Wi-Fi card, this might be the way to go. To create a hotspot, simply use the Windows search bar to search mobile hotspot. Click on it to open the mobile hotspot settings and then make sure that you're already connected to a 5 GHz channel through your standard home Wi-Fi. Then turn on your mobile hotspot and if you're already connected to the 5 GHz, your computer should automatically transmit a 5 GHz channel and give you a warning to confirm that. Then simply connect your Quest to this hotspot and you're good to go. Once you have your hardware set up, it is time to get your software downloaded and installed. First, you need to download Virtual Desktop from the Oculus Quest store. Don't buy it for any other platform. Buy it for the Oculus Quest either through the app or within the headset. After you have Virtual Desktop installed on your Quest, you'll need to install a patch through SideQuest. Oculus doesn't want Virtual Desktop to have the ability to play VR games wirelessly, and so Virtual Desktop uses SideQuest to deliver this patch to you indirectly so that you can still Still use it to play VR games. If you've never used SideQuest before, I'll link a video that explains the whole process. Once you've figured out how to sideload with SideQuest, simply look for Virtual Desktop in SideQuest and then click Install to Headset. Next, you need to install the Virtual Desktop Streamer app onto your PC. You can find this on the Virtual Desktop website, which I'll link below. Once you have it downloaded and installed, simply enter your Oculus username exactly as written, as this is how the Streamer app will find your headset. For now, Ignore the rest of the settings in the streamer app as I'll talk about those later in this video, so stick around. Lastly, you'll need to install any software required for the types of games you plan on playing. For example, if you plan on playing Oculus Store games, download the Oculus PC app. If you plan on playing Steam games, you will need to download Steam and then Steam VR. The link for the Oculus app and Steam will be down below, but to download Steam VR, you need to open Steam and then search for Steam VR in the Steam store. Make sure you type Steam VR with no space between Steam and VR, and also make sure you don't click on the one that says main. It should just say Steam VR and nothing else. I'm not sure what this other main one is, but that page will not allow you to download the program. Once you find the correct Steam VR page, just hit play now and it will start downloading the software. Just a quick note, you used to need Revive to play Oculus games through Virtual Desktop. That is no longer the case. Just open all of your games through the Games tab of Virtual Desktop and it should work just fine. Now that you've got your hardware and software set up, the last thing you need to do is make sure your settings are optimized to give you the best performance possible. Please note that all settings will depend on your setup, but I'll give you a general guide to follow when setting up your virtual desktop settings. First, let's take a look at the settings in the virtual desktop streamer app on your PC. I leave all of the boxes checked except for lock computer on disconnect. Most of these settings are up to preference, but leaving these checked will make sure that your streamer app is always ready to go. The other thing that you want to look for here is the preferred codec. Which codec you use will depend on your setup, specifically your graphics card and CPU. HVEC produces better quality visuals, 
but it will increase latency. Also, it is only recommended if you have a newer and higher end GPU or CPU. I leave it set on auto and it automatically chooses HVEC for me with my RTX 2060 and Ryzen 5 3600. My best advice to you is to just leave it on auto and if you aren't getting the results you want, try switching it back and forth to see if it makes a difference. Next, we need to look at some settings within Virtual Desktop within your headset. There are two tabs that we need to look at, the settings tab and the streaming tab. First, let's take a look at the settings tab. Most of the settings here are up to preference and it will only affect your experience using the app to control that your desktop for work or to watch movies. It will not affect your experience streaming games from your PC to the headset. One setting you need to check, however, is audio. Make sure microphone pass-through is enabled. One thing that really frustrates new users is other people not being able to hear them in-game, and this is usually the reason. Make sure it is checked, and you should be able to talk in virtual reality just fine. Now, let's switch over to the streaming tab. Make sure you have sliced encoding selected. It will reduce latency, but as it says, it might not work with all GPUs. It is worth having checked to see if it will help you. Gamma does not change anything about the quality of the stream, it just makes your screen brighter if you want it brighter. VR frame rate will let you select the frame rate you want streaming. If you have the Oculus Quest 2, then you are now able to stream at 90 frames per second with this new update, which is fantastic. If you're still on the Quest 1, stick with 72 frames per second. Also note that if you're experiencing significant lag or having other issues, it might be worth lowering the frame rate to see if that helps. Lowering the frame rate will decrease the amount of data that needs to be sent every second and can help improve your experience if you have a bad connection. I would only do this as a last resort, however, if nothing else fixes it. The last two settings, VR graphics quality and VR bitrate, are the most important settings for increasing visual quality and reducing latency. All of the other settings up to this point have been pretty straightforward, but with these two settings, you will have to experiment with your setup. I experimented with these two settings by keeping an eye on the latency and visual quality I was getting in the opening scene of Half-Life Alex. First, I set VR graphics quality to low and then tested various bit rates. I then set VR graphics quality to medium and then high, testing various levels of bit rates at those levels. I was testing this using the Quest 2 with the Wi-Fi 6 router linked in the description. With this setup, Virtual Desktop was recommending a max bit rate of 119 megabits per second. Through my testing, I found that at all three levels of graphics quality, 119 megabits per second was way too high. While the picture looked great at that level, my latency bounced all over the place and I could see black bars on my screen every time I moved my head. So then I tried the lowest bitrate of 32 megabits per second and it gave me 27 milliseconds of latency at all three levels with no black bars. Now this would be great except the picture did not look good at all. So now the challenge was finding a good medium between these two extremes. Through my experimenting, I settled on a bitrate of around 90 megabits per second with graphics quality set to medium. At this level, I could, couldn't see any noticeable difference in the quality of visuals when compared to setting everything to max, and I was getting a stable 40 milliseconds of latency no matter how quickly I moved my head and hands. If you'd rather have less latency, then you can go ahead and reduce the bitrate. But for me, I didn't think that the 13 milliseconds difference in latency was worth sacrificing the visual fidelity of the game. Also keep in mind that these settings might change depending on the game. In less demanding games, you might be able to have a higher bitrate than in games like Half-Life Alex. This is why I chose Half-Life Alex to test everything as I knew that this was going to be one of my most demanding games and any settings that worked for Half-Life Alex would probably work for my other games. Depending on your setup, you will need to experiment a bit, but if you want a quick start guide, then just start somewhere in the middle. Set your graphics quality to medium, and then the bitrate halfway between the lowest setting and what Virtual Desktop is recommending as the maximum. Now that you have everything set up, you're ready to enjoy wireless PC games. To start a game, just open Virtual Desktop on your Quest. Make sure you're connected to the PC by selecting it in the menu, and then go to the Games tab and select whichever game you want to play. When you're done playing, remember to close the game on your PC, as just closing Virtual Desktop on your Quest will leave these games running on your PC, and we don't want to hear about your PC blowing up because you left Half-Life Alex running while you ran to the store. For those of you wondering about the differences between using Virtual Desktop between Quest 1 and Quest 2, I will say that there is not significant differences in latency, despite using the Wi-Fi 6 router on the Quest 2. This is probably due to the fact that on the Quest 2 we're now streaming a higher resolution image and more of them every second with the higher frame rate. 
So while I'm able to transmit more data with the Quest 2 and my Wi-Fi 6 router, most of that extra space is used up with these new improvements that the Quest 2 has. I could be wrong about this, but this is the conclusion I've drawn from my experience with both devices. That being said, the picture quality is much better on Quest 2, and I would definitely recommend it over the Quest 1 in a heartbeat. If you want to know more about that, check out my review of the Quest 2, which I'll be posting in the near future. So subscribe to see that, and if you want to see other VR-related videos, definitely subscribe for that as well. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm always happy to help.